Philippine Newscast for May 10, May 16, 2013. Good day to everyone. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat and welcome to the website of Philippine News. These are our stories for the day. We'd like to start with the news that the Catholic hierarchy uses election to assert influence over officials of the church seeks to regain power. In cathedrals around the Philippines, huge black and red banners are asking faithful to choose between team life and team death, which priests are warning the nation's soul at a stake. The signs are part of the effort by the Catholic Church to assert influence at next week's midterm elections with politicians who supported a birth control law passed by Congress last year, black marked as part of team death. Richard Vicente Navarra of Macaulay City in the center of Philippines, who pioneered in the use of team life and team death banners, said he believed the law had opened the doors to worst social ills. According to him, birth control will just snowball later on. After this, they will file bills for divorce, euthanasia, abortion, homosexual marriage. So it will be death. The Catholic Church has for centuries enjoyed immense political power as well as social power in the Philippines, a former Spanish colony. For more than a decade, the church also successfully derailed campaigns for parliament to pass a birth control bill that would have mandated the government's hand out of free contraceptives and sex education be taught in schools. But despite another intense church campaign, the landmark law was finally passed late last year. Next in line is the news about a human trafficking case wherein two Filipino workers in the U.S. were not allowed to leave the Saudi compound in Washington, D.C. area. Philippine embassy officials in the U.S. met last May 16 with two women who told U.S. authorities that they were being detained against their will at a Saudi compound in Washington, D.C. area. Consul General Arnel Paranera and Labor Attaché Luz Viminda Padilla spent one hour with two Filipino household workers at a government office in Virginia. Ambassador Jose Cusilla also spoke to the two via telephone and assured them that the embassy is ready to extend them the necessary assistance they may require. The two Filipino women were in the protective custody of U.S. authorities who took them under their care last April 30th in response to the urgent request for assistance. Last week, CBS News reported that federal investigators raided the McLean, Virginia compound, allegedly owned by the Saudi military, after receiving a tip on the State Department hotline. The two Filipino women who were not identified said that they were brought into this country legally and worked on the household staff at the compound. The women and authorities are facing an obstacle in pursuit of the case because foreign diplomats enjoy immunity from prosecution. The Saudi official in the particular case reportedly is protected by full immunity. This time, we tackle the news about the move of the Philippine government to the UN to protect abducted peacekeepers that were kidnapped last May 7. The Philippine government last May 8 called on the United Nations Security Council to ensure the safety of peacekeepers in the Golan Heights following the second abduction of Filipino forces in two months. Syrian rebels last May 7 seized four Filipino serving in the UN peacekeeping contingent in the tense ceasefire zone between Syria and Israel. The Philippine underscores the apprehension and illegal detention of peacekeepers are in gross violation of international law. The Philippine calls on the Security Council to exert all efforts and its influence for the early and safe release of the Filipino peacekeepers and ensure that the freedom of movement and safety and security of peacekeepers in all UN peacekeeping missions are observed. The United Nations are still trying to contact and negotiate with the kidnappers 
but warned there was still heavy fighting in the area. Foreign Secretary Albert Del Rosario met with UN Undersecretary General for Peacekeeping Operations Herb Vladson late Tuesday to coordinate efforts to free the four held captives. And finally, a bridal shower held in the Bay Area turns fatal when their limo burst in flames at the San Mateo Bridge. A night celebrating the start of a new life where a newlywed turned into a horrific nightmare in which the bride, Nerisa Fojas, and four of her friends died when the limousine they were riding burst into flames. Nerisa Fojas, the 31-year-old celebrant and eight friends were passengers in a stretch limo going west on the San Mateo Hayward Bridge last May 4th when the vehicle caught fire. Pronounced dead on the scene were Fojas of Monterey, Michelle Estrera, age 35, of Fresno, Jennifer Ballon, age 39, of Dublin, Ana Alcantara, age 46, of San Lorenzo, and Philomena Gergona, age 43, of Alameda. The fire was concentrated on the back of the passenger compartment, but no one for sure knows where it started or how it started. The fire also injured four others, namely Mary Grace Guarjano, age 42, of Alameda, Nelia Arellano, age 36, of Oakland, Amelia Loyola, age 48, of San Leandro, and Jasmine De Guia, age 34, of San Jose. The injured suffered more smoke inhalation and burns and were taken to local hospitals. According to the limo driver, 46-year-old Orville Brown of San Jose, the fire spread quickly soon after someone knocked on the partition behind him, crying out that something was terribly wrong. Brown helped four women escape through the partition window, he said, but it was too late for the others. According to Brown, there were just so many flames, and within maybe 90 seconds, the car was fully engulfed in flames. San Mateo County Coroner Bob Forcott says the women who perished were found huddled near the small window, and they were lying on top of each other, apparently trying to get away from the fire. And this has been your weekly news and review. This news has been brought to you by the premier Filipino American newspaper right here in the United States, the Philippine News. On behalf of the management and staff of the Philippine News, this is David Rodriguez signing off and thanking everyone for listening. Maraming salamat po. Have a wonderful weekend. Mabuhay po sa inyong lahat.